it up and just... Welcome to our NCAA tournament press conference, pregame tournament press conference with Utah State. We will talk with the Aggies players in just a couple of seconds, and we want to remind you to please refer each question to a specific player, even if you have uh, a response that you want from the general group, please at least do one player at a time so that uh, it'll help our technical people keep up with microphones and cameras and everybody watching on satellite. And satellite would be on the following, Galaxy 17 Transponder 20A, and the downlink frequency is 12086.5. So if each of you have memorized that, you've memorized those frequencies? <laughs> You're good to yeah, go? Yeah, we got it. Got it. All right. Uh, do we have questions for our Utah State? Yes. Uh, Elton Alexander, a plane dealer out of Cleveland, Ohio. I'll direct this to Quinn, but actually would like to have uh, all you guys respond. I counted uh, six different states and three different countries uh, on your roster. Everybody always talks about the locker room and how important that is. Can you guys kind of, you know, How'd you bring that all together, and uh, is it still a work in progress, or who's in charge of the music, and <laughs> oh, what have you? That's a good question. Um, I mean, the cool thing about just playing basketball brings people together that you never meet kind of outside of basketball, and I mean, we're fortunate enough to have people from yeah, all over the U.S. and all over the world, um, and I think just our love for the game has really brought us together, and I think generally um, we just rotate through who, who has the music in the locker room, um, but I mean, it just, it's just a brotherhood um, and people that all consider, I mean, brothers for the rest of my life. Um, as far as that goes, I think it's been pretty natural. Um, I don't, sometimes you can feel a, a team forcing um, being friends, but uh, I feel like this year it's been really big that we establish a culture, kind of reestablish the culture um, of family and togetherness at Utah State. And uh, I feel like we've done that really well. I, th I feel like it's natural as we come together. Yeah, I, th I think it's been <clears throat> incredibly helpful um, as far as developing the chemistry. I think, you know, because we all come from so many different backgrounds, it, it, it keeps us away from, from developing any type of click or anything like that. So, you know, when we're hanging out together, it's, it, it's everyone together. It's not groups of three and groups of four and stuff like that. So fortunately, also, we have multiple of our American born players are bilingual so that's helped um, I, I would assume that's helped with with our Portuguese players and and stuff like that so it's it's definitely been a fun experience for us getting to know each other um, we're a group of guys that love to play basketball and the love of the game is the same um, we all love to play basketball and we all love to play with each other and I think we we're just a group of guys that that just that just we're not we're not worried about anything. We're just we just love playing with each other, and that helps a lot. We're not we're not we don't have much egos. We're we just love each other, and we love playing basketball. That's it. It's simple. Jeremiah Jensen with KSL Sports in Salt Lake City. Uh, question for Nimi: Growing up in Portugal, did you follow the NCAA tournament? And if so, now that you're here, is this a dream of yours? What's this like for you to be here? I, I've never, I've never followed it growing up. But last year, when I was being recruited, I heard of it, and, and yeah, I saw it was pretty nice. So <laughs> it's, uh, um, it's really nice being here and being a part of it. So I can't wait for it, and I hope I play. We will have a good game and get a win. Question for Sam. This group really, you guys haven't been to the tournament, so this is new for everybody. Uh, but is, is at the same time, is that kind of helpful because you guys don't have to 
I don't know, maybe the pressure's not there and just you, you guys are excited to be here. What's the feeling among the team now that you've come here, you know, being picked to finish ninth? And we've talked about that a lot, but maybe the, the expectations weren't that you were going to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's, uh, like we've talked about before, expectations preseason from those around us weren't very high, but as a team, we felt that we could we could really do some damage, and um, we've obviously grown and grown and grown throughout the season. But this is this is obviously hopefully not a once in a lifetime opportunity for some of us, but it, it's it's something that you have to enjoy. I think our our coaching staff and us as a team have done a good job this week of not not trying to worry about the outside stuff as far as you know the media and 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 all the excitement around it, but trying to focus on on Washington and our game coming up and. You know our our uh, our scouting reports and prep and practices have been the same that they've been all year. So, you know, as far as mentally, I don't I don't assume that I don't anticipate that we'll come out really nervous or jittery. Fortunately, we got to play in our championship game on Saturday in the Mountain West tournament, and and that felt like it was a big game too. So, we did a pretty good job there. So, hopefully, we'll do a good job tomorrow as well. Matisse. Matisse Thibel might be the uh, Scott Gerard, by the way, of the uh, Zone Sports Network. Matisse Thibel might be one of the best defensive players you guys have seen all year. Block shots, steals, averaging three and a half steals a game. Sam, this is for you. How do you? Uh, what do you see from him when you look at him on de defensively, and 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 how do you try to uh, get around a player that has that kind of uh, skill set? Yeah, he's uh, he's a great athlete, and he's. I mean, this the. The report says that he's about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, but his, his arms, you can tell. I mean, watching film, you can see how long and how athletic. And um, He does a great job anticipating passing lanes and, and blocking shots from behind. So, you know, they have a lot of good athletes and, and guys with length in their zone. So we're just going to have to play the way that we've played all year. That We do that by sharing the ball, by moving the ball, by trying to be smart, high IQ basketball players. And, you know, he's going to make some plays that's – it's what this tournament is about, and you know the best players make plays. But hopefully, we can we can minimize what he does by by moving the ball and by by not letting the ball stick and by doing things the way that we've done things all year. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. This is for any one of you or all of you. Uh, this this is a good introduction to the rest of the nation for your school. Can you describe a little bit about your school and what brought you there? Let's go ahead and start at the end and come this way so we know who's going to speak. Um, I mean, for me personally, coming to Utah State, I mean, Utah State had a rich tradition in basketball um, and something that each, I feel like each one of us, when we got recruited, they showed us, I mean, videos of the spectrum where we play our home games and it's just a crazy atmosphere and it's something that you, you want to play at a school like that where you have the community behind you. Um, and then also for me, being that I was going to go on a mission for my church, and Utah State has, deals with that. Um, so just going into that situation with the coaching staff that understood that, that I was going to go for two years and come back, um, also helped me um, choose to attend Utah State. And I mean, I definitely made the right choice, and I've, I've loved it ever since. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's Utah State. Uh, we're in Logan, Utah, and I think it's just – it's a really awesome school. If you could ever look up pictures, um, it's a really beautiful just environment uh, to live in um, up against the mountains. Um, but besides that, it's a really great academic school and and like you said, uh, really good at basketball. Um, they had some really good years in the past um, where the fan base was really behind, um, selling out almost every single game. And I think that we all saw that um, and kind of wanted to be a part of bringing it back. And I think that's what brought a lot of us to Utah State. Yeah, I, I grew up a Utah State fan. Both my both my parents graduated from Utah State, so for me it was it was an easy choice to to go play at Utah State. I felt like it was the the best the best fit both academically, um, basketball wise, of course, and and just being close to family. But you know, for those that have been following college basketball for a long time, Utah State used to be a regular in this tournament. Um, and like Abel said, it's been a few years, but we're excited to be back and we're excited to represent our school and our university and. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully we represent them well starting tomorrow. Utah State is a, a school that um, would be perfect for me because of uh, they have passionate fans, um, good, good conditions, good, good, a good coaching staff, and everybody, everybody on the on the school cares about you. And and I really wanted to go there, and 
um, having players like these like uh, working for me and helping me out it's really nice and having having a good um, a good growth th throughout the year um, with they with them is really nice um, and the uh, and the fact that we made it here it's it's really nice too Hi, Chip Scoggins from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Quinn, you get a new coach for your senior year that can be challenging or difficult. What, what's allowed this team to kind of have that seamless transition to a new staff and have this kind of success? Um, I mean, just Coach Smith in general. I mean, yeah, going into a coaching change, there's always the unknowns. Um, but just Coach Smith was the perfect hire. And I mean, our first meeting with him, he comes in, it's I think 6 in the morning or something. He just wanted to meet us real quick and he's coming in bouncing off the walls his energy and it's just something that's contagious and I think that's something that he's passed down from that first meeting on um, to now and just the energy and culture that he's brought um, and just the the way he coaches and instills confidence in each one of us and the other coaching staff lets you play basketball I mean how, how you're supposed to play I mean we've all been playing since we were little um, and he, he makes it so that we're, we're playing the game and not thinking. Um, and basketball becomes a lot easier when you're out of your own head and you know your coach believes in you, you know your teammates believe in you. Um, and it's just been a, a great year. The whole coaching staff has that mentality, but it starts with Coach Smith. Sean Harrison with the Herald Journal. Abel, could you tell us a little bit about your, how, you, how far you've come when you were a walk-on? weren't playing very much, and all of a sudden you start become a starter, and you've started pretty much the last half of the season. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting journey. Um, I mean, I had spotty minutes at the start of the season, um, and it's kind of been like that. This is my third year at Utah State. It's kind of been that roller coaster, not really knowing what to expect, but um, Coach Smith did a great job at meeting with me, um, knowing, telling me that he has confidence in me and um, what he expected of me, and so uh, I kind of just stuck with it, just the same as I always have. And um, I'd like to say that a lot changed, but really uh, I think I just took advantage of the opportunities that were given to me. Um, I prepared the same way for every single game, prepared the same way in practice. Um, and luckily I got a couple opportunities that, that kind of uh, paved the way to, for me to start and for me to kind of get a solid, uh, solid playing time. And so, um, yeah, it's been great, but uh, I'm, I have to give the credit to Coach Smith for just believing in me and uh, giving me this opportunity. This will be our final question for the players. Uh, Art Teal, Sports Press Northwest. Amy, did, um, could you talk a little bit about your basketball, uh, how you got interested in the game, and uh, if you had followed an NBA team and any of them were a particular hero to you? Can you repeat it? Can you repeat it? The question. Can you repeat the question. question. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you, uh, uh, your basketball heritage and how much, how much you may have followed the NBA, whether you were interested in a particular player? Um, I grew up, I never, I never actually, I grew up playing basketball from, since then. Um, I, I've always watched the NBA since I was like 14. And since then I, I watched it every, every year, every week, every, almost every day. Um, I like I like a lot of players, especially big men that can that can do a lot of things. I try to model my game like Anthony Davis, players like that, and it's it's hard, but I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Terrific job. Thank you. We appreciate it, Coach Smith. In just a couple of minutes.
that. <laughs> Coach Craig Smith from Utah State. Same, uh, same rules apply. If we have questions to start, go ahead. Uh, Elton Alexander with the Plain Dealer out of Cleveland, Ohio. I asked the players and I asked you, you got a locker room with players from six different states and three different countries. So how do you, how much of that is choice? How much of that is chance? Uh, you're the coach. Obviously, first year, I'm, some of it I'm sure you inherited. But just talk about that a little bit. I mean, everybody talks about locker room culture and how important that is. So uh, have at it. Let us know what, you, what we got of what you got. Well, um, that's a great question, and it's something you think a decent amount about. Um, but at the end of the day, so a lot, you know, obviously it's my first year, been here for um, just short of a year now. Um, so at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you're from, who you are, it matters what you're about and what kind of character you have and how are you going to represent. You know, recruiting is the lifeline of your program. And so um, you better recruit people first. So whether that's a young man from, from Utah or Oklahoma or Portugal, we got the Portuguese connection, right? We have two of the three uh, players in Division I basketball. We call them the Wonder Twins, like the old uh, Wonder Twin Powers activate. <laughs> um, but, um, but at the end of the day, you got to be able to identify young men that can flourish uh, in, for our case, in Cache Valley, in Logan, Utah, um, and that can flourish in your style of play. So our style of play is different than Program X, right? And so a guy like, um, there's going to be guys that are going to really be set up for success in our program that might struggle in a different program. But that being said, there might be guys that really flourish in a different program that might struggle in our program. And so as a coach, you got to really identify the types of players that are going to do well. It's easy to go spot a guy that can run fast, jump high, but that doesn't mean he's going to be a player for you. Right? So you got to dig deeper. It's like Nick Saban said, you got to peel the onion back seven layers. Right? You go to, you go to a high school, you got to ask the administrative assistant, Hey, what, what do you know about this kid? You got to go ask the uh, custodian. What do you know about this kid? Go ask the, the history teacher. What do you know about this guy? And pretty soon things start kind of lining up. And my first day on the job at, at uh, Utah State, I got hired on a Sunday. On Monday, I met with the academic people. I met with the compliance people. I met with strength and conditioning coach. Met with our athletic trainer. And you can go right on down the line. Tell me about our team. Tell me about the program. Tell me about this individual, this guy, this guy, right? And you do that, and pretty soon things start kind of checking out. And then day two, and part of day one, met with each individual student athlete. Tell me about the program. Tell me about academics. Tell me about strength and conditioning. Tell me about, right? So you do your homework. And we've been so fortunate. I've been coaching. I was just telling um, this young man to my right, um, about, I've been coaching for 23 years, and I've been very, very fortunate to be on very, very good teams, coach a team that played in the national championship game, been on some teams that have struggled, been on a couple of NCAA tournament teams, and, and I feel like the luckiest man on earth to be able to coach this team, because going into the year, we were one of the, we were one of the 50 youngest teams in the country. Right? We dressed 12 guys, and six of them are freshmen including the one when we had the open walk on tryouts. <laughs> um, uh, um, so, and he's one of the freshmen. So to be able to have this group come together and do what we've done, it's been beyond magical, to say the least. You know, we were ranked number nine in the preseason polls, and we're a number eight seed in the NCAA tournament. It's pretty incredible. Jacob Myers with the Columbus Dispatch. When you took this job, what type of player did you think Sam was? You, you've probably talked about it before, but for those who haven't seen him on a national stage like this, why has he been so successful in your system? Well, first of all, Sam is a young man of incredible character, and he's like the all-American type of kid. You know, the, the country's going to see one of the best players in the country play tomorrow. Uh, certainly getting ready for the, when I was, uh, when 
when I was contacted about possibly applying for the, the job, obviously I was doing my research, um, and certainly Sam was a guy that really, really stood out. Sam was a guy that had, he was the one guy in our program that had some accolades coming into the season. He was the third team all-conference player last year, and certainly watching the video, even though our style of play is totally different than the style of play last year, you could see like this kid, he's got great feel for the game, he understands the game, incredibly unselfish, and the common theme that, that everybody had said about Sam Merrill was all Sam cares about is winning. It's all he cares about is winning. He doesn't care if he's an all-league player, he doesn't care how many shots he gets a night, um, and that was easy to see once you start going. I remember our first practice this summer, I said, Sam, if we're going to get to where we need to go, and that's winning the Mountain West, we need you to be much more vocal. The rest of the year, I mean, li literally the rest of the year, he is the most vocal. He is so cerebral, so intelligent. We're very detailed with scouting reports. Sam knows not only what the guy he's guarding is going to do, he could tell you what the, the five man's going to do, the four man's going to do, and he's yelling it out. Like, he'll be guarding his guy, and he's yelling back at Nimi, Nimi, <laughs> watch the duck in, right, or whatever it might be. And so, and then you get into the season and it's just so obvious, like early on in the year because of our youth and we really struggled shooting the ball early, not because we had bad shooters. I think it was like a guy like Brock Miller is a freshman. So the speed of the game is going super fast, right, for him. And once Christmas passed, he got into a groove where he started playing like a sophomore, the game slowed down. And Sam would come up to me because he had to do so much, of, carry so much of the load. And he said, coach, I think we need to run this to get, get Brock going, or we need to do this to get Diogo going, or we gotta, you know, maybe a few more post touches for Nimi, you know, or whatever it might be. And so he's so unselfish. And then at the end of the day, you know, you think back to a game like New Mexico, where we controlled mo at, at New Mexico, we were, uh, we started out the league one and two. So he'd won two in a row. So we were three and two in league play at the time and we're on the road to New Mexico. They come roaring back. That's one of the toughest places in the country to play and we're down one, we just hold it for last shot. We're either gonna win it or we're gonna lose it. And we run a play for Sam and basically he gets triple teamed and then one guy drops off and he gets double teamed. And a lot of times the best score, no matter what, is just gonna fire that shot up. And he makes the right play, the right read and delivers it over his shoulder to Abel Porter, who he had been playing with since fifth grade. And Abel makes a game winning three um, with like 0.7 seconds to go. And he's done that continually all year. Guys love playing with him. We're number, uh, we're number nine in the country in assists, right, on the year. And 62% of our baskets are, are assisted, which is an incredibly high number. And it all starts when you have a guy like that that's so unselfish. And so when your best player is your hardest worker, everybody falls in line. And I could talk another 10 minutes on Sam if you want, <laughs> but that about sums it up. Uh, Art Teal, Sports Press Northwest. Uh, Craig, I, I think I read where you guys, your roster has uh, six or seven uh, returned LDS, uh, from, from, returned from LDS missions. Yes. How much of an advantage is that in terms of uh, maturity and the ability to trust that these guys know what they're doing? Well, certainly um, it's been fantastic because all, all those guys are just incredible people, first and foremost. Um, you know, obviously, Generally speaking, they're a, uh, a couple years older. Um, there's certainly a sense of maturity. Communication skills are tremendous. Um, but like anything, it's, you know, um, uh, we have training table on campus, right? And, and so, you know, you get down with practice, guys go to, well, they, sometimes they don't want to go to training table. They want to go home and eat with their, their wife, you know, if they're, you know, our guys that are married. So it's always different, but it's been, I could go right down the line, Quinn Taylor, Quinn's one of our two seniors, and you know, I always say he's like, you remember the old commercial, E.F. Hutton, right? When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. That's Quinn Taylor. And we call him the godfather or the grandfather. Either one uh, suffices. But his leadership um, skills have been impeccable. You know, I know he was just up here earlier with Namiyash Keda. So Quinn, you know, you know, I don't know how many minutes he played last year, right around 20 a game. Uh, it's hard to keep him out of the off the floor, you know, he's so good that way. But what he's done, certainly for our team, because he's, he's a guy that every single guy in our program has utmost re respect for, no matter wh who you are, where you come from. And, um, and then he's just been like such a big brother to Demiash, um, just teaching him the ins and outs of the game, 
the ins and outs of the league. You know, it's been incredible that way. So certainly, though, um, it's nice to have. Uh, Craig, Chip Scoggins from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. You mentioned you guys were picked to finish ninth in your league. What was your first impression, summer workouts, when you got your first glimpse of your team? What do you, what do you think your expectations were? Well, from the get-go, our goal was to get to the NCAA tournament and win when we get there. We want to get to the top of the Mountain West Conference champions. We have a, we have a plethora of, guy, of young men from Utah, a guy like Sam, Brock, Abel Porter, um, grew up in the state of Utah, uh, where their dream was to play basketball at Utah State. So inherently, you have a ton of pride. Those guys grew up, you know, Sam talked about after we won the conference tournament championship about being at the game in 2011 when they cut down the nets. And he remembers it vividly. And so you have, uh, I remember um, that Monday when I met with all those people, I met with Sam's parents that night. And we were talking about the glory days. And, and so, you know, it's always impossible until you make it possible. And, you know, it's uh, I always, there's a quote I remember, it's a, it's a funny thing about life. If you refuse to accept anything but their best, you very often get it. And so we had high expectations from day one. That, and we talked about, we, our guys started a, um, I'm, I suck with technology, although I'm good with Twitter. Um, uh, or it was like Bill Belichick said, snap face and insta chat. And that's, I say that to the team all the time, but, our guys started their own, um, I don't think I've ever shared this before, but our guys started their own, um, what do you call it, group text, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that what you mm -hmm. call it? And so, yeah, I just figured out how to do a group text. I mean, I knew how to do it. I didn't know how to name it. So I, I did it with our staff, like, finally in January. Like, wow, coach, <laughs> staff, that's great. But, um, but on the top of the, I think Sam started it. And on the top of the, uh, uh, the name of the group text, is that what you say? The name of it, the title, sure. was Mountain West Champs. And so, um, you know, our guys, it was a very emotional win. Well, we beat Boise State in overtime. We were fighting a lot of sickness that night. That was our fourth to last regular season game. Beat San Diego State at home. Everyone was talking about Nevada, which was the next game. But we had to beat San Diego State, obviously, to make that Nevada game mean something. Beat them first time in... Mount West Conference history that we'd been a part of, that we had beaten them. Obviously beat Nevada, first time we'd beat a ranked opponent since 2007. And so now everyone's talking about the hangover game, right? Are you gonna have enough gas in the tank? All that stuff, because we had a quick turnaround at Colorado State. And Sam said something in the group text, now it's here, let's give everything we've got and stay locked in so we can get what we said from day one in our group text, you know, Mountain West champ. And so that was a pretty um, neat thing that way. So our expectations, I've always believed as a person, as a coach, as a father, and in anything you do in life, why would you ever put limitations on yourself? Like, why would you ever limit yourself as a person in anything you're doing? Why would you ever put limits on yourself in your program? And so our guys is buying from day one. I think what's maybe helped us in a weird kind of way is because we are one of the 50 youngest teams in the country. And so we only had, and I know our local guys are, have heard this, you know, you know, over and over and over again, but we only had seven guys on this, or excuse me, we only had four guys in this program that ever played or averaged more than seven minutes a game. And so, um, so in some ways it hurts you because you lack some experience, but I think in some ways it's helped us because we just have this youthful exuberance, <laughs> right, that we're going to conquer the world and nobody's going to tell us any different. And so just the chemistry we've had, the camaraderie, and a common goal has been incredible. And that goes to these young men that were up here and obviously all the other guys in our program. This will be our final question for the coach. Uh, Lauren Kirschman, the News Tribune. Uh, Matisse Seibel is one of the best defenders in the country and really unique in what he does. What are your impressions of him now that you've been looking at Washington? Um, I've had to take a lot of Advil over the last four games because he's a headache. Uh, uh, he's like... Um, I can't remember, I think I heard this on a telecast, but I think I, we use a ton of football and boxing analogies in everything we do. And I would, he's, he's almost like Deion Sanders in football. Like, you know, when Deion Sanders played, it was like he eliminated whatever side of the field. And he's so instinctive, so quick twitch, so long, and his hands are just so fast, right? And um, for a guy to average playing zone, over three steals a game and two block shots a game, 
is, is incredible. And, and, he does, and he does it while staying disciplined, right? He's not just running all over the place gambling and, and out of position. So he dominates the game in such a different way that I'm not sure I've ever seen it, you know, from that respect. So um, you constantly, you got to always account for where he's at. Their team forces 17 and a half turnovers a game in the Pac-12. That's hard to do. And they're doing it mainly just in the half court. And so he's certainly a, a monster part of it. But their whole team, I mean, you know, um, Newell's the player of the year for them. Dickerson was a first team all league kid last year in the Pac-12. And David Christmas had a phenomenal season se senior year. I actually did a home visit with him, him and his parents, when I was uh, an assistant at Nebraska. His mom can really cook. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible, that food. I was like, <laughs> wow. Well, thanks very much for uh, – we, we'd hope for more enthusiasm, quite frankly, but – Hey, we can keep going all day. I, I'm I, telling I mean, you. We, we, I we got didn't. all kinds of time. We don't play until 6 p.m. tomorrow. Yeah, unfortunately, we have more press conferences what? here to follow. Yeah, we found out there are other teams here. <laughs> but thanks very much, Coach. Right. We appreciate Thank it. Thanks for coming out. Go Aggies. <laughs>